In this lesson, we're going to review and discuss some important concepts about ratios and proportions. So to start things off here, let's remind ourselves of the difference between a ratio and a proportion. Now a ratio is simply just a comparison or a quotient of two quantities. So for example, you might look at the ratio of students to teachers at Framingham High, or the ratio of wins to losses for a sports team. And let's suppose we had some sports team that had a ratio of wins to losses of 3 to 2. There are several different ways we could express or write that ratio of 3 to 2. Probably the most common way we'll use in this class is simply just the fraction 3 over 2. Another way that often gets used is this, 3 and then a colon and 2. So again, that would be 3 to 2. Or it could also just be written in words as 3 to 2. So again, there are several different ways we could express that ratio. Now on the other hand, a proportion is an equation that states that two ratios are equal. So here's a typical example of a proportion. You might see 3 over 2 equals 6 over 4. There's two ratios there, and they're equal to each other since 6 over 4. If we reduce that, we would get 3 over 2. Now we could also express this proportion in a different way. We could write it as 3 to 2 equals 6 to 4. So that's using that colon notation. And there's also some names given to the different terms in this proportion. The terms 2 and 6 here are sometimes called the means of that proportion. And the terms 3 and 4 here are sometimes called the extremes of the proportion. I guess because that's the first and last term when you write it that way. Now let's look at our proportion again. We have 3 over 2 equals 6 over 4. There's something very important about what's known as the cross products of this proportion. One of the cross products would be 2 times 6. And the other cross product would be 3 times 4. When we evaluate these cross products, 2 times 6 is 12 and 3 times 4 is 12, we'll notice that the cross products of this proportion are equal. And that's something that's true about any proportion. The cross products of a proportion will be equal. So it's a very important idea. So let's actually write that down a little bit more generally. Let's suppose we had some proportion. So if A over B equals C over D then it would be true that the cross products of this proportion are equal. So one cross product would be a times d, and that would be equal to the other cross product, which is b times c. So this is often referred to as cross multiplying, something you learned about in Algebra 1, and it gives us a way to solve proportions. For our first example here, we're going to review how to solve a proportion. So one way we have to solve proportions is by cross multiplying, since we know the cross products of any proportion will be equal. Now one thing I would recommend doing here is grouping together x plus 2 in parentheses. I'd recommend doing that whenever you see an expression like that. So to solve this, we'll cross multiply. So that would be x plus 2 times 4, that would be one of our cross products. I'm going to write it this way, 4 times x plus 2. Again, parentheses are really important there. And that will be equal to the other cross product, which is 3 times 12, or just 36. All right, now in terms of solving here, we can distribute the 4 on the left-hand side. A little distributed property hours to remind us of that. And we'll get 4x, and 4 times 2 would be 8, and that would be equal to 36. And we'll subtract 8 on each side. And that will get us 4x equals 28. And just divide by 4 on each side here. And we'll find that x would have a value of 7. So again, that's just a quick review of how to solve proportions. Uh, you'll be using this skill a lot in this unit. You'll be solving a lot of proportions. And again, you can always solve a proportion by cross-multiplying. 